Welcome back to another Worthless Mutts. Uh, on this show, if you want to call it channel or whatever you want to call it, presentation, this is where I give my insight and my perspective on dog culture. Uh, from what we know about dogs, it's from the cartoons and the movies where they give this lies and the excuses about dogs. For example, dogs are man's best friend, dogs are loyal. Uh, that's you know you know essentially all we hear about dogs. We never get to hear any negative or any truth regarding dogs. Anyone wants to you know in general speaking in the media, anyone wants to or, or in just with your peers, anyone wants to say anything bad against dogs, they are shunned, they are bashed, they are attacked, where they can't speak the truth about dogs. And many people, uh, you know, have a um, a negative opinion about dogs where they hate or dislike dogs and just because how society is and this dog culture is they keep it inside and they pretend to accept these dogs uh, when they don't have to they, they just do it just to you know make friends just to um, not feel bad for them but in reality a lot of people who don't, don't like dog at least they hate dogs but they won't say it because I think some of them just feel bad for dogs because of how dim-witted, brain-damaged that they, that they are. Because they are. Uh, in this society, in, in dog culture, dogs are praised and worshipped as if they're heaven-sent, as if they're perfect and all that. But you, you, you really look at them, they're worthless. They, they can't survive on their own. They require people to feed it. They require people to, to train it. They require people to have a fence to contain it. They require so much from people. But yet dogs are seen as the absolute greatest thing on earth. When in reality, they are worthless. They are the worst things on the face of the earth. And dogs, dogs, they are not... Dogs are not real animals. Dogs have been created by man. And some people and, 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 and the reality is a lot of these dog nuts, they don't know that. They don't think about that. They think dogs come from God. Dogs come from the creator or the creators. But the truth is, all these dogs are talking the domesticated dogs that we see in these homes on leashes. They are created by man. Man created them in these labs. They're man-made creations. <laughs> They're not natural animals. That's why they cannot survive in heat, cold, being by themselves, being with someone, uh, being with other dogs. They get sick. They're full of diseases. This is a man-made abomination. You know, in those movies or TV shows where there's an evil scientist and he creates this you know, evil monster, and it goes out and destroys, you know, the city. That's what dogs are. Dogs have been created to destroy, and that's what they do. They're destroying uh, their owners. <laughs> they're destroying children, the neighborhoods. They're, they're, you know, excrement, their shit, their piss, destroys cement. It destroys posts. There's, there, there, there's an article about dogs pissing on a pole, and I think it was in Japan, and their piss malfunctioned the whole post. The electrical, I guess the traffic stop post or the light post. Uh, their piss and shit it contaminates wildlife. There are some parks and reserves where they ban dogs from going there because they're attacking other animals. And their sh again, their shit, and, their shit and their piss destroys nature. We don't see this in, in with natural animals. We don't see it. Natural animals benefits and provides benefits for others. But dogs, there's that weak link where they provide absolutely nothing. Nothing to the table. Absolutely nothing. And speaking of providing absolutely nothing, we're going to be discussing the topic of mutualism or mutualistic. And as you see in the screen, coexist. 
many natural animals, including humans and with other humans and other animals, we are able to coexist together. We go outside, we see birds, we coexist. We see squirrels, we coexist. See other people, we coexist, and, and there's no problem. You may get a little problem here and there, uh, but compared to dogs, they're not killing us. They're not attacking us for no reason. Um, so, so we're able to coexist with various animals. But we, we, some of us can scuba dive into the ocean, and, and we can, you know, communi- and, I say communicate, but we can, again, coexist with some of the, the wildlife underneath the ocean. We go to the rainforests and the jungle. Some people can coexist with various animals. Of course, again, there's exception, but, you know, if you do things right, you can coexist, no problem. But with dogs, after we have fed them, (laughs) I know I said we, but when I see we, I mean talking people in general. So I might be using people, humans for this topic, but again, Humans, we, we feed dogs, we groom dogs, treat them well, we save them, rescue them, we, we give them shelter, we give them everything. There, we, there are people who are dying for dogs, who are fighting for dogs. But yet, these same dogs are attacking us after we have rescued them, have given them food, they're still attacking us. For what reason? Because they attack us. What are they going to do? Attack someone else? They can't, again, they can't survive on their own. So what are they doing attacking? Sure, in, in, in uh, the animal kingdom, there's some prides and packs where, where they do have to kill the leader, other, you know, the other uh, animals in their pack or pride. But they have a reason for that. They kill, but then they can still survive. They can still move on and survive. That's their role. But with dogs, they kill the owners. What are they going to do? They can't live on their own. They know they can't. They're just going to be mauling everything, mauling all the food for no reason. That is not natural. That is not natural in the, in the animal world. Not what none so ever. And with lions, one thing with lions, something I don't agree with with lions, but it's kind of gruesome, but it's part of what they do. Some lions will kill other, uh, other lions' cubs. It's not even just with lions. I think with monkeys, too. They get another mate pregnant. If they have young, they will kill the, the other young of someone else's offspring. They'll just maul them and kill them. Just like that. We have, in the animal world as well, uh, I don't know if you heard of it, but it's called sibling side or siblicide, where... It usually happens with birds, where when birds, you know, they hatch and they're like siblings in a nest, sometimes the siblings will kill one of their siblings. Uh, They say it's for food or resources. And sometimes even the mother or the father will will kill the, the young. They'll just kill the young or throw it out of the nest. That's that's nature for them. That's nature, and, and they still are able, obviously not the ones that die, but the ones that are still alive, they still prosper on this earth. But dogs killing people, killing the people and attacking the people that are here to, to, to protect them, while they themselves are worthless, it makes no sense. It's only proof that dogs and humans, we can't coexist with each other. No, and we're going to show you, I'm going to be showing examples of these animals where they don't even have to train each other. But with, with humans and dogs, we always have to train each other just so we can coexist. Well, dogs have to, tra- no, I mean, <laughs> dogs, the, the, the dog nutters have to train the dogs. But even when they do that, they can still get attacked. They show the dog love, they still get attacked. So again, dogs and humans... We cannot coexist with each other. If we could, why is there so much, so many news medias lately um, requiring, you know, new laws, new new punishments, severe punishments for dog owners? 
well, if if we can, and dog if dogs and people can coexist, why are these laws existing? We don't see that for cats or rabbits or for any animal, period. But it's only for dogs. Man's best friend. Man's loyal friend. But only with dogs. There are so much fines and them coming every day. Oh, dog attacks are on the rise. Um, harsher punishments are coming. Higher penalties. Higher fines. Only with dogs. Which only proves again that we cannot coexist with each other. Mutualistic relationship. This is when two organisms of different species work together, each benefiting from the relationship. Uh, one example of a mutualistic relationship is that of the ox pecker. It's a kind of bird and the rhino, and the rhino or zebra. So this is where the birds go on top of the rhino or other mammals, deer, etc., and they eat the, the ticks and the bugs off them. So one benefit for the, the bird is that they get food, and one benefit for the rhino and the other animals, they get the, the ticks and all the other bugs removed from them. Um, again, in the term mutualism, can be simple be simply defined as a relationship in which both species are mutually benefited. The relationship can either be with in the species or between two different species. Uh, we look at dogs, compare this to dogs. I mean, with, I mean, with dogs, for example, we're going we'll to compare it with humans and dogs. Humans and humans, we can get together. We can, we can you know, work together. I mean, I mean we can. We've built this earth, this world together. We've built it. Of course, there's going to be problems. You know, you know, I'm not going to be ignorant about you know the the genocides that happened throughout history. But at the end of the day, humans and humans have helped build this world, and and we need people. We need family. We need siblings. We need those. We need neighbors. We work together and we build. But we had dogs and people. You can't build. You can't build because they're gonna dogs are going to be busy attacking you. How can you build with a dog? Dogs are brain damaged and mutants. They're worthless. Like like they they provide nothing. I mean, you can help build with horses, oxes, carry things from place to place with those animals, etc. But not with dogs. Dogs are worthless. How about with dogs and dogs? Is there a relationship between dogs and dogs? Obviously only attacking. They'll attack each other in the same pack for no reason. Attack other random people for no reason. And, and they just sit in slums, dirty. They live in garbage. They live in garbage where, again, the people themselves have to go and rescue them from their conditions. So if dogs and dogs can benefit from each other, why are people always rescuing them? Uh, the species with this relationship is termed as symboinance. Excuse my pronunciation. Uh, mutual relationship is seen in all living organisms except dogs including human beings, animals, birds, plants, and other microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, fungi. Mutualism is a sort of symbiosis. Symbiosis. I pronounced that right. Uh, I'm not going to get too into it with these ones, um, but there are various types of mutualisms in the animal world. We have obligate mutualism, fac facultative mutualism, Trophic mutualism and defensive mutualism. Um, and each one of these, you know, they, they play an important role for various species. Um, uh, and here are the examples of, mu of mutualism humans and plants. I mean, we you need plants to eat, we need plants to, you know, uh, to help inhabitant 
the 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 ground to eat for flower for flowers things like that um you know we plant and they give us something back we plant and we give them something back we tender to them we water them we take care of them we nourish them etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, we have the oxypeckers and rhinos kind of went over that where the again these birds will feed off the rhino from its um, bugs or ticks um, yeah and, and and there are various types of relationships in nature where most of it is productive but there's some that are just you know it's it's very one-sided um, what are the types of relationships in nature? Nature is held in a delicate balance. Remember that word, balance. Supported by every organism found on this planet, the interaction between these organisms uphold the balance of nature. Remember, balance. With dogs, there is no balance. None whatsoever. With dogs, they'll attack every livestock and not even eat it. They'll attack their owners and children, and they may eat the owner, but um, where's the balance in that? Even these apex predators, like lions, I believe they know like when they should attack and when, when okay, not really attack, when they should hunt and when they shouldn't hunt. I think some, somehow they know when to do that. Um, they have good sense of smell. They're hunters. They hunt in prides. And they're able to, to get their meals if they need to. And if they, you know, you know, as good as a hunter as they are, they can hunt all day, every day if they needed to. But they don't. So I think many of these natural animals, these predators, do understand balance. Do understand, hey, let's save them for later type of thing. We need to eat later type of thing. And they do, and and you know, kind of a little, maybe a little bit off topic. But in the lot in the movie Lion King, the lions explained it this, about the circle of life and how, you know, lions eat the deer and deer eat something else and so forth. The circle of life where they need, uh, they need that circle of life. They need one another, even though even though it's about devouring each other, but they still need that cycle. The lions, uh, even in that movie. It it showed how it showed how you you need that balance, and with balance you need that patience. Because when Mufasa was king, everything was flourishing because Mufasa understood balance. But as soon as Scar, Scar could rep represent dogs. Scar let, let, Scar represents the dogs, the worthless ones, and as soon as Scar was king. All the animals, all the food, vegetation was wasted, was all gone. And what was it? Was it wasn't Nala, but Nala's mom was like, there's no more food. You ate up all the food. So Scar in that represents dogs. Because dogs don't believe in balance. Dogs don't have order. But Mufasa had the order. The lion has the order. The lion understood the circle of life. The lion understood the importance of everything around. But dogs, even after you treat them well, you feed them and all that you know nonsense to them, they will still attack you. They will still attack you. They, they, they don't care. They don't care about you really because again it's it's all end of the day it's all about food you, you you train the dog to like you you train the dog to be where it is you don't have to do that for any other animal i think cats are, are a good example of you know of that you know mutual relationship of that relationship that mutual respect because you don't really, you know, for an instance, you don't really have to train a cat per se. Obviously, there, there's exception a little bit, a little bit. But the, for the most part, you don't have to train the cat. You, you don't have to tell a cat where to where it needs to stay. You have to tell a, do, a cat to sit. 
Cat, cats understand. Cats know their role. But dogs are, are just the worst. Uh, but... Um, for time. Yeah, so we're going to look at some of the relationships in nature. Um, first one is symbiosis. Finally got it right. Symbiosis. Yay. Symbiosis is a relationship in which both par parties are benefited and the organisms live in close contact. A well-known example of symbiosis uh, is seen in lichens. Lichens are made up of algae and fungi, and the fungus provides the habitat while the algae provide the food. This way, both organisms benefit from each other. When they continue to interact, they change each other over time. This is called coevolution. So, good, a good, another, this is a good example of relationships. Two different species benefiting from each other. One provides the habitat, the other provides the food. That is, is you know, nature. That is true nature right there. Uh, mutualism. Mutualism is a relationship in, with, in which both, party, both organisms profit. It is a type of symbiosis. We see example of mutualism in the human body between humans and gut bacteria. The human gut is a perfect environment for which bacteria to grow. In return, the bacteria protects humans against diseases. E. coli generate, generate vitamins B12 and K. So there are good bacteria and there are bad bacteria, but with human, uh, the good bacteria can protect us, protect us from other sicknesses, and you know, it helps keep us healthy. So that's another good, you know, relationship where, where we benefit from each other. We feed it, we treat it well, and in return, it, it treats us well. Um... I have another example like the clownfish and sea enemy. Sea enemy. See, I think it's sea enemy. Sea enemy. Also, an example of mutualism. Sea enemies have stinging cells that keep the fish safe, while the fish help the enemy by moving, by removing organisms that harm them. So, another good example: uh, the fish. Yeah, so so the fish um, helps remove, you know, organisms that will harm the um, the sea enemy, while the sea enemy then provides shelter for the fish or protection for the fish. So the fish does something for the sea enemy, and the en and the sea enemy does something for the fish. Um, we have predate pred pred uh, pre predation. Uh, predation is a relationship in which one organism kills and eats the other. Here, the predator benefits while the prey is harmed. So as we can see, there's only one benefit here, where the, where the lion is attacking this ox or bull. Um, and, they're, and they're doing it to survive. They're doing it to survive. They're, they're not hunting every single one of them, leaving them dead for, hey, I'm going to leave this, eat this later. No, they, they hunt it and they eat it now. Eat it with their pride, eat it alone. They're just, they're just what they do. Um, but comparing that with dog culture, they will hunt. I don't want to call it hunt, but they will attack left and right nonstop. Whether it's animals or people, they'll just attack and go, attack and go, and attack and go. Uh, have competition. Competition is when organisms fight for this, the same food, space, or materials. Competition can be between organisms of different species or different organisms of the same species. Here, both parties lose. An example of competition is seen between corals and sponges. Sponges live in the corals, but if sponges compete against corals for food for food and when the corals die. If the corals die, the sponges no longer have a place to live. 
So, this by this again, this this is um, there's that little balance, but also competition. The sponges and the coral they need each other. If the the coral dies, the sponges die. If the sponges eat too much of the of the food or whatever, then this the, the coral dies and the sponge eventually dies. So it's like this. You know they're, they're they're battling, but at the same time there there is always that 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 balance. Um, common selenism is a type of relationship in which one party benefits while the other party is neutral. Barnacles found on whales are an example of commonism. The barnacle stuck to the whale is safe from harm moves to new places and finds food, but its presence has no effect on the whale. The relationship between cattle and cattle egrets, that's the bird, is also one of the commonalism. Cattle dis- dis- disturb insects while grazing and cause them to fly out of the grass. These insects are then eaten by the cattle egret and the egrets are fed and there are no a- actions have sorry and their actions have no effect on the cattle so that again uh, I kind of went over with, kind of went over this with the rhino where you know this is like a relationship you know one they have bugs and ticks on them and here comes a bird that's going to like remove it and and no one's harmed other than the, the bugs obviously but in terms of the the bull and the and the bird it's a pretty good relationship going on. And aminicillism, excuse my pronunciation. I think this one would best describe dogs. Aminicillism is a type of relationship in which one party is harmed while the other is neutral. An example is when elephants walk across a grassland. The grassland is crushed, but the elephants are not affected. So sort of like with with uh, these dogs, they they will attack their owners. They will spread diseases in the house, and is the dog affected after the attack? Spread diseases? Most unlikely, it's not. And this also describes dogs as well. Parasitism. Parasitism is a relationship in which one party benefits while the other is harmed. I think this one describes dogs 100%. I think both of them do, but this one is what really gives us the definition of, of dogs and the human relationship. Dogs are like parasites. They have parasites on them. They're like parasites. Um, and they will they will attack. They will feed off and attack their owners and attack, feed off their owners and um, and attack people. Feed off their owners. Sorry. They'll feed off their owners and attack people for for no reason too and one thing that makes dog culture worse is that it's that it's these dog nuts these humans that are uplifting these dogs and lying about them telling us that they're loyal they're man's best friend they're they're harmless they love all that nonsense but in reality it's not like that. They're mauling us. They're hurting us. They're spreading diseases. We're dying from their licks. Dying from their, their shit and dying from their piss. Um, the organism that benefits is called the parasite. Just like dogs. Just like, just like dogs. And the organism that is harmed is called the host. It's people. 
The people are the one that are harmed. And dogs benefit from that. But in the end, dogs will then get put down for their... For being dogs. But this is what's protected. Dogs is protected. Even though... They're... they're so vile towards us. But we're going to protect them and keep them around us. But in conclusion, the relationships in nature preserve environments. Many organisms depend on them to survive. Just like us with other, every other thing in nature. We depend on the water, depend on the fish, depend on the trees. We depend on various animals. We need predator animals. We need prey animals. We need all that. It's part of the circle of life, the system, the way we connect with one another. We need that. However, in dog culture, it's not like that. It's a weird relationship because dogs are killing us. They're killing us. They're attacking our children, attacking neighbors. Every day, all day, even after they've been fed, even after they see owners giving them food, they will still attack the same person that has given them food. Again and again. Do we see that? You know, in the circle of life, do we see that? Where there's benefits from two different species and they just turn around and say, I'm going to kill you now? Obviously, naturally, if you talk about the sponge and the, the coral, it's done so naturally. But with dog, it's like, it's so random. I mean, you, you, with dog culture, you suspect it, but it's still, it's still very random. Here we're going to show... Um, some examples of of uh, I'll show you some pictures, examples of animals being various animals being able to coexist with each other. Various animals showing uh, mutualism. Um, so we have the shark and these fish. Um. I believe like the fish, you know, feed off the, uh, I guess the bacteria or the, I don't know. I can't, I can't know specifically, but they feed off like the bacteria off the shark. So they have like this relationship there. Uh, we have these, these Egyptian plover and the crocodile. These birds will, will eat the, um, the gunk out of the crocodile's mouth. The crocodile will open its mouth and this bird will be allowed to like feed and eat eat whatever meat or whatever is in its teeth. So it's like a, a it's like a you know it's like teamwork right there. Um uh, Yeah, so the, these fish they help get rid of uh, of help get rid of parasites and clean away fragments of food caught between. Is this the right one? Mm. So sorry, yeah, yeah. So while the plot the the pilot fish helps to rid the shark of parasites and clean away fragments of food caught between their teeth, it benefits from protecting each other from predation. So we have the shark is like the apex predator of the sea. So we have these fish that are feeding off the, I guess, the bacteria, the fragments off the shark. But in return, it's like they get protection from that shark. And when see the, these sharks, like you don't want no beef from them. You don't want no beef. So it's like a good partnership there. And speaking of partnership, it's like these animals, they, they know their role. They know what they have to do and they're going to stick to that role. The, these fish, all they do is eat uh, various, you know, um, 
fragments from the shark. That's their role. And the shark protects them. That is their role. That's it. But with dog culture, with dog culture, like they, they get these dogs and they don't know the role of the dog in the, the human relationship. We have dog nuts, you know, sleeping with their dogs. Dog nutters, you know, acting as if their dogs are children, babies. They're prioritizing dogs over their own children. They're prioritizing dogs over the community. Um, they're dressing up their dogs. They're doing all this stuff with dogs. When in return, dogs are not receptive to none of that. None of that. But the human, the dog must will act as if the dog loves it and likes it. They write little memes and notes and, and think and act as if the dog loves it. No, it's only you dog nutters that love it. This is only a one-way street. And the dog itself does not benefit from any of the crap you do. Even feeding it, the dog does not benefit from that because it still will attack you. Still will make your life miserable. But anyways, uh, we have the coyote and the badger. Um, two different species. Two hunters. Like two great hunters. Uh, this is where the coyote and the coyote, they team up with each other. Since the badger is such a great hunter, it can dig in the ground for, for various animals and food. So the badger digs under the ground and it tries to attack animals under the ground. So guess what? The badger's under the ground. The other animals will pop up, pop up out of the ground right into the coyote's mouth. And there you have a meal for, for both the coyote and the badger. Uh, we all know about the hermit crabs and the sienemies. Pronounce that name right. Um, again, they benefit from each other. The, the crab uses the, uh, the shell as its home. I think it's also for like protection, I believe. Um, another unlike marine pairing is the hermit crabs and sea anemones. Uh, by poking the enem the enemy uh, enemy with its pincers and holding it in place, the crab encourages it to attach to its shell, while the en enemy bags itself a free ride across the seabed upon the hermit crab's back. They e e effectively serve as bodyguards, providing shelter and using their barbed tentacles to actively fend off hungry. Hermit predators. So, basically, um, the shell provides protection for the crab, while the crab is basically uh, like a, it's like a it's like a transporter. So, help the the shell get transported to transport the shell um, to various places, either the sea or the land, etc. Also, it's there to protect the shell and the sea enemies from other predators. So, because uh, it has like these sharp, pointy, prickly skins, and it's you know can help protect from you know predators. Um, we have the Colombian lesser black tarantula, the dotted humming frog. I also have the drongos, the murkrats. Mer so they form a bond. They also do form a bond as well. Other relationships in the uh, animal world is um, where we spoke about the clownfish and the the, the the sea enemies. I can't pronounce that word. Enemin. Uh, I'm going to see how to pronounce it because I am failing. I thought it was sea enemy. I don't know why. I think I ever heard on Arthur they call it sea enemies, so that's why I'm calling it sea enemies. Um, pronunciation. Uh, let's go slow first. Anemone. 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 <laughs> But anyways, um, yeah, we have the fish and the sea anemones. Uh, we have insects like bees, butterflies. 
with plants. You know, they take nectar, eat nectar from the, the plants. In return, the butterflies or the bees or etc., they spray out, you know, pollen for the plants to help them grow. Ants and aphids. So in this relationship, the... Um, the ants will the ants will um take the aphid eggs into their colony so they can hatch and have a have a warm place to live during the winter winter times um as for the aphids uh oh yes that's what they do so so the aphids what they do is they provide honeydew so they provide food for the ants in return, the ants will, I guess, take care of the aphid eggs in their colony. So again, that's like a good relationship. And again, they know their role. That's it. That's what they want. That's their role. That's their job task. And that's what they do. But in dog culture, it is very disorganized. Very disorganized. I already spoke about this with birds and other mammals where they will... The birds will feed off various bugs and ticks off of various animals... From either in their ears or in their nose. We spoke about this. Again, these fish will feed off the fragments off of these sharks. And the sharks will be like per, will be used as protection for these fish. Um, the Lekans spoke about this in the other um, on the other site. Um, it's like a um, it's a relationship of food and protection. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into this, but nitrogen fixing bacteria and legumes. We have humans and bacteria. Again, good bacteria, bad bacteria. But when we eat, eat right, you know, we provide good bacteria for our body to, to function. In return, our body will function properly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Uh, some of this is pretty much repetitive. But a good one that I... I want to talk about was the ostrich and the zebra so they in their relationship they help protect each other the the zebra have they have good eyesight but their hearing isn't too well but the ostrich they don't hear well they they don't hear well wait wait but the ostrich they can hear well but they can't see too well so that's where the partnership comes in they can't uh hear well but the ostrich can, well, they can see, they can, they can't see well, while well, the zebra can. So it's like they they can help alert each other if there's any danger or predators nearby. I hope that makes sense. I really hope that makes sense. Because, again, I hope I'm going to say it one more time. So the zebra, they can see well, but they can't hear well. The ostrich, uh, they can't. They can't see well, but they can hear very well. So they use each other's weaknesses and strengths in order to alert them of danger. So the zebra can see like a I don't know, another predator. They can alert the ostrich of, hey, predator is nearby. The ostrich, ostrich can hear predators coming by. They can alert the zebra, hey, something is nearby, and they can flee to safety. So yeah. Um, that, I guess you can say is a brief, um, I want to say overview of a few animals, you know, uh, being able to coexist with each other. Um, obviously they didn't give us a lot, there's only a few, but we learned, got to learn about some terms and, and some terms of the animal world where various species you use other species either for protection or for food and there's like this you know neutral partnership you do this for me i'll do this for you type of thing and uh with dog culture it's not like that at all and i'm going to show you uh why dogs cannot coexist with humans especially with with our children um 
kind of ruined it. But anyway. um, so you, we'll see. Like we'll see various quotes on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of it. You know, worshiping dogs. You know, acting as if dogs and children go together. Seeing dogs love children, children love dogs. They all go together. If you can see all these pictures, all of it is, you know, um, reinforcing or pushing the narrative of dogs and children go together. Um, for example, they say with this ugly thing with this little child, you know, this, this dog could just shake this child to death. But it says dogs always have a strong inner bond with their owner. They always know whether whether our hearts are sad or happy. They, they will come up with bogus nonsense quotes like this. And the dogs themselves can't verify this. But while they have all this nonsense, all these lies about dogs, in the meantime, dogs have been attacking children. They have been attacking children. They have been attacking their owners over and over and over and over. Non-stop. All this is about dogs attacking while they are playing ignorant with such nonsense quotes like this. Praising, acting as if dogs and people, children, they go and go together as if they can coexist, as if they have a mutualism with each other, as if they have a positive relationship, which is not the case. Dogs are not receptive to people, period. None whatsoever. You can feed the dog, hug the dog all you want, but all that is is for food. End of the day, dogs don't care. All they want is food. They don't know you. Food, that's all they want. While you're making up all this crap and thinking dogs love you, meantime, they're attacking people, attacking children, left to right. How can we say dogs can coexist with our children while at the same time dogs are destroying us? They're killing our children. They're killing us. If, if, if this occurs, if this occurs, if all this occurs, then this is all 100% lies. I want to look at something. I just saw something. I just saw something. Yeah. Um, the question is, is it likely that a fox will attack me, my child, my cat, or my dog? I can't believe they inserted dog there. Um, they say fox attacks usually minor bites on people, but they are extremely rare. Generally speaking, foxes are not a threat to humans. Number of attacks on cats and dogs each year is unknown, but it, but to seem to be more minor significance relative attacks on each other. Typical foxes and cats ignore one another and fights are rarely observed. Again, foxes are another type of wild dogs where they come out at night and, you know, we can coexist with each other. They, they don't necessarily bother us. They're not a threat to us. They see us and they run. Like, like, come on, we, like, look at this thing. Look how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful this thing is. Then you look at these things, man. Ah. You look at these ugly ass things. Oh my gosh. Look how ugly these things are. Their fur is ugly. Everything about it is hideous. But then... You look at this beautiful fox. Like th this, this is what God, if there is a God, but this is what a creator has created. Something so nice to look at, easy on the eyes. 
beautiful. They, te- they don't tend to not bother people. They run away from people. And, and that's it. That's, that's it. That's, that's it. They, 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 that, that, that's basically it. They see us and they run. Bites get tax attacks, fox and dog attacks, yeah, fox and human attacks are very rare. But, but, with dogs attacking us, it's endless. It's an ongoing cycle. Only reinforcing and letting us know that dogs and people cannot coexist. But dogs and foxes, we do just fine. Sure, there's going to be little snippets and little things there and there, but it's very little, very rare. But dogs attacks. Dogs being called man's best friend, loyal. They're hyping up dogs as if they're perfect. They're attacking us every day. Sending either sending us either to the hospital or to the grave after we have fed them and take good care of them. Give them a shelter and a home. They attack us. We ignore the foxes and all the other wildlife. And they ignore us. They do their things at night. They do their things in the day. No problems. No problems. None whatsoever. We don't feed them. We don't give them shelter. We don't give them none of that. But they will stay away from us. They won't bother us. Like this thing is so beautiful. But then you look at these ugly things. Gosh. This is what they call beautiful. Look how disgusting this is. God, the creator, did not make these things. It didn't. How about the African wild dogs? Like, these are like the... You know, I respect them, but they're like the... Uh, they're, they're kind of annoying. I, I've watched videos of them, like, you know, um, terrorizing other animals. But they're kind of annoying, but you kind of respect that. But at the same time, these are, are, are actual beautiful dogs. These are dogs I respect. Obviously, I wouldn't want to go face-to-face with them because... You know, because they will gang up on you. They will gang up on you. And the, the, these things, you don't mess with these things. They're, they're, like, they're like land piranhas. But yet they're so beautiful. With their big ears, very unique. But this isn't unique. Um, what's it called? Um, uh, Saint Bernard Dogs. This is not unique. Their faces, their characteristics is not unique. It's hideous. Hideous. None of this holds any benefits. But these dogs with these airs, they use them to hear. Hear for prey, hear for predators. They have a reason. They have a reason. The wolf is a wolf. Look at this. How did these, how did these turn into this? Because these are man-made. You're not finding these in nature because they cannot coexist with nature. They will destroy nature. They are, um, what's that word? I'm looking for that word. They're amenalisms. They will destroy nature. Destroy the grass. Destroy the vegetation. At the same time, they're like walking parasites. All they do is destroy, destroy, destroy. 
sure these things will destroy to eat. But they will attack. I mean, I won't say attack. I'll, they, they, they will hunt, eat, and then move on. They, they know their roles. They have a role to play. And they do it very well. They have a role to play and they do it. These guys, they come like most, most of the time, they come out at night. And for the most part, we can coexist with them because they come out at night. Usually at night, depending on where you are, but there are far less coyote attacks than anything. Let's, let's look up uh, coyote attacks. That it's, it's it's funny how with the coyote attacks they have stats for the U.S. and Canada, but you don't you're, you're never really going to see stats for dog attacks in the U.S. and Canada like this. They'll do that for the U.S. and Canada, but not with dogs. It's so hard to find uh, dog stats in Canada. But one click, boom. Here we are. We conducted analysts of coyote attacks on humans in the United States and Canada. So, two big countries. Two big countries. I think both Canada... And the U.S. together, they take up probably all of, I think, like maybe three quarters of Africa. Maybe? Maybe, maybe? And including only one, including 142 reported incidents of coyote attacks resulting in 159 victims. Most attacks are classified as predatory investigative in nature. And I, I guarantee that all of these attacks, I'm going to say all of these attacks had something to do with them walking or having a dog, a worthless mutt, which is what attracted them to them. And also, again, yeah, they do attack children, but we cannot be ignorant, ignorant, ignore the fact that dogs attack children a lot more. But we know our roles, though. But but with coyotes, we know our roles. We keep, for the most part, away from coyotes. We don't put bring them in our house and dress them up and have our babies take pictures with them. But we do that for bully breeds. We do that for bully breeds. We take our newborn baby and place our newborn baby right in front of that bully breed. We take pictures of it, make videos of it, and say, Hey, my bully breed didn't attack. That means I'm a great owner. The next thing you know, it attacks. Oh, it never showed aggression before. It's like, really? Does it really have to show aggression to attack? I'm like, come on, people. <sighs> How common are coyote attacks? They are extremely rare. What if we put how common are dog attacks? How common are dog attacks? And, and immediately you get 4.5 million Americans are bitten by dogs every year. Just 81 people died after being bitten by dogs in 21 years. And they use the term bitten as if the dog just bit and then stopped. It really means attacked, mauled, chewed up. When dogs attack, they're attacking to kill you. As if they're angry at you. Because not even lions, when they attack other animals, look as angry. I watched a video with a group of, of uh, lions attacking a crocodile, and they don't even look as as they didn't even look as vile or evil. They, they look pretty normal, 
And when dogs attack, it's like they look angry. It's like the dog looks angry. Um, the dog looks angry. Look, the dogs looks like they look angry. That's how they look like. We don't see that in nature. Like, no one is bothering these things, and they're so angry all the time. They look angry. When they're attacking innocent people, they look angry. They look ferocious. When lions attack, they don't look that bad. They don't, they don't look angry. They don't look angry. See, they're attacking. They don't look angry. They look so neutral. They look normal. See, they, they look so normal. When this guy's getting attacked, that's why he looks like that. But, you know, watching videos of them attacking, they don't look angry at all. See, they're attacking, but this guy isn't, doesn't look angry at all. This, this is probably more about territorial. This is like ter This is like this is what they do, though. Yeah, obviously, they're gonna fight for territory for me. So they get. So that's their business, though. That's their business. But when they're attacking predators, or, or I mean prey, they don't look. They don't look angry at all. They don't look angry. This guy is just chilling there. You can see. My bad. Sorry. I thought you could see everything. But this guy is just chilling there. Or lady or girl or whatever. Just chilling there. They don't even look angry. They don't look angry. This is, this is AI, obviously. Oh, when dogs attack, they look angry. They look vicious. They look vicious. Uh, not the, um, let's see. Let's see. Pit bull attacking. See, they look angry, man. People do all this stuff for them, and they look so angry. They look ferocious, man. Gosh, look at these, man. They look ferocious. This looks like the Predator from the Predator movies. <laughs> like the Predator. <laughs> or Alien. <laughs> uh. Uh, watch this. I'll say Pitbull Angry. See, they look hideously angry. What are they so angry for? Yeah, but with lions, again, look at that. I mean, I know, I know, you, you, know, you, you know, you don't want to like mess with these things, but it's like, it's like you just want to like give them a good pat on the head or something. They look so beautiful. It looks so beautiful, man. Such beautiful creatures. God, they're just so common to look at. Obviously, I wouldn't want to go face to face with one. Obviously, they would whip my ass. But they're so pleasant to look at. Oh, dogs. It's like, ugh. Let's just type dogs and see what we get. Ah, look at this. Look at this. What is this? Look at this. Ah, look, what is this? Especially these dogs. They're always angry too. What are you angry for? Because we're feeding you? You're still angry? Gosh.
But yeah. But yeah, end of the day, many animals and humans can coexist with each other. We benefit from various animals, whether it's to eat, whether it's to help with the environment, nature. Uh, there is some sort of benefit. But with dogs, it's it's very complicated. Very, very complicated. With dogs, it's... I mean, yeah, yeah, again, you, you do all these things for dogs. And like we've shown, many animals are there to provide shelter or food for another species. And, and they get along fine. And they're not mauling each other. They know their roles, but with dogs... You, you give them food, you give them shelter, all that. They still go and mow you. And I think why it seems so disorganized is because in dog culture, the media, society in general, they worship dogs as if they're good and perfect and friendly and do no harm. You tell people you're scared of dogs, they're going to laugh at you. You're afraid of dogs? Ha ha ha. But they can maul you to death. They're diseases. They're annoying. Like, I, I don't... It's dog culture, man. It's, it's again, it's so, it's so disorganized. It's so dysfunctional. Man. <sighs> yeah, so anyways, um, that's pretty much that. Hope you were able to learn something and see that, again, the there are species out in nature that benefit from each other. They, they, they have a benefit, they have a role to play, and, and they, can, they can coexist with each other. We have predators and maybe some prey being able to coexist with each other. Animals that may be competing for food able to coexist with each other. And they do it just fine. We have humans in our backyard animals. We're, we're like foxes, birds, and we do just fine. Tax, very rare. But dogs, again, they are worshipped. But yet, you know what, yet, 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 but yet. All we see, the most that we see, is of dogs being more harmful than showing any benefits. I am Gore the Dog Butcher with a nether worthless mutts and please remember that it is okay to hate dogs.